ladies, Kristen here today, and I'm going to be talking about how to apply your Jamberry nail wraps. Now, if you need to know how to prepare your nails first, I have another video for that, and I really recommend that you do that first. So that way you know how to get rid of your invisible cuticle and have everything ready to go. So if you've never done Jamberry nail wraps, they come in a full sheet. This is just a half sheet that I'm gonna show you right here. And as you see, they're clear, which is really helpful. So with the Jamberry nail wraps, you can kind of line them up and see that which one fits your finger. Now you wanna have space. I'm gonna show you this one on the side. That gap is really good because that means that there's not gonna be peeling on the side, okay? You wanna be really careful to not put it over the edge because if you get it too close, you're gonna get bumps and it's going to peel. So nobody's gonna notice it. When you see it from the top, nobody can tell, okay? So you're going to pick which nail wrap fits your nails the right way. And I have another video that shows you how to pick the right nail wrap and make a stencil. Um, if you've got weird shaped nails, like my thumb is kind of squarish. Same with my toes. So I've already picked the nail wrap that matches. I've cut it in half, so it's ready to go. I put the other half in a safe spot so I don't lose it. I have done that before. And the first thing you want to do after you have already prepped your nails, you want to wash your hands with soap and water. Sometimes dish soap helps get rid of that oil. So if you've got oily nails, that'll help your nail wrap stick better if you use dish soap. So I already opened this nail prep wipe. These help to clear off any extra oil on your nails after you've washed them. You can also use a cotton ball and rubbing alcohol instead if you don't have a nail prep wipe. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this out and you really want to get in there and scrub. Scrub, scrub, scrub. And get the edges too, because that's a place that most people miss and you end up getting bubbles on the side. It's because you've got that invisible cuticle, or you've left oil there. So you wanna make sure you do that really nice. Okay, now I'm gonna make sure it dries off a little bit. I'm gonna put it in front of my mini heater. If you don't have a mini heater like this awesome one here, this is off on the side. If you don't have one of these, you can use a hair dryer. Sometimes that pushes stuff around to make sure that things aren't flying as you do your nails. You can also use a space heater. I've heard of people using candles. You need a good heat source, but really, these mini heaters are amazing. And they're $19, but if you do the basic bundle, which we just announced, which is like the first time Jamboree's ever done a um, discount, you can get four wraps, you can get some supplies to get your nail, wrap, nail wraps on, and you can get one of these bad boys for a dollar. So that's just amazing. All right, so to get started, I'm going to peel the nail wrap off. Now some people use tweezers. I just am really careful. I feel like when I use tweezers, I can't hold on to the nail wrap well enough. So I know that this part's not going onto my nail, so I'm going to hold it from this end. Now be really careful to not touch this part down here with anything else because that will make it so it won't stick. Now I like to do the cold method. This means I'm gonna put it on my nail first and if I need to move it, I can. So I'm gonna do this the best that I can on camera. I'm gonna set it down. Now if I need to move it, pick it up, I can do that when it's cold. If I've already heated it, then it's a lot harder to do that. But I actually set it down really well. Um, practice, you know, the first time you do this, it might be hard, just like the first time you painted your nails. But after you have some practice, it's okay. So my first step for this, this is the one, two, three method, is I'm just going to do a little bit of heat down the middle. Now, if you have a rubber pusher, these things are fantastic. You can also use your finger, or you can use an orange stick if you have one. And I just go straight down the middle. I'm not touching the sides at all, but I really wanna get a lot of pressure straight down the middle. You can even heat it one more time. You don't wanna to do too much heat. You don't wanna leave it in front of there for a long time. Otherwise, it'll wrinkle and bubble. That's okay, it kinda of stuck right there. That happens. So I'm, next I'm gonna do this side right here. And it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna go down the side, and if I'm not sure if I'm afraid of those bubbles on the side, I can give it a little tug. That little tug on the side will make sure that I don't get any of those bubbles, which you really don't want bubbles on the side. 
See how nice and smooth it is over here? I'm going to do one more heat thing. There we go. Lots and lots of pressure. It's almost more about the pressure than the heat. The heat does help. You definitely want heat, but the pressure is a big deal. Now I can kind of see that it's will get a wrinkle if I don't do that. So I'm going to move it around and adjust it and then heat again. And I'm going to do this back corner, make it nice and smooth. And since I typically get bubbles on the side, if I don't pull it, I'm going to pull it again. You don't need to pull it really hard. If you pull it too hard, you're going to end up with a bubble in the middle. And then I pull it a little bit while it's under the heat. Not a lot, because it's going to shrink when you're done. It kind of shrinks a little bit once it cools off. And if it shrinks too much, you're going to end up with a bubble. So I'm just going over it. Lots of pressure. And then I'm going to let it cool for a little bit. Usually I go and I do the other side and then I come back and then I trim it. I'm going to leave it for a couple more seconds. Now, if you see bubbles on the side or let's say you see a bubble on the front, it's not quite working for you. You can also peel it up and try to smooth it, smooth it back down a little bit. I wouldn't recommend doing that a lot, but it saved me in the past. Now, sometimes the tips don't seal, and I should have showed you this before I was waiting for it to cool. Sometimes I put my fingernail from another hand underneath there for strength, and then push it down. I'm gonna peel, there we go. All right, I think it's cooled enough. I know I put it under the heat just recently, but it doesn't take very long. So I like to flip it over because I can see where my nail is and I trim really, really close. Sometimes I go back for more. Like you can see right there, there's a little bit stuck. And I make sure the ends are really, really good. So usually I'll do all of my hands first and then I'll come back and file. But for this video, I'll show you how to file. So you wanna get a glass nail file. Jamboree has them on our website. I actually got these ones before I um, before Jamboree had them, but you wanna put it kind of at a, I'm gonna see if you guys can see this, at a 90 degree angle. And you're going to start filing like this. It might roll a little bit, and that's okay, that's the part of the nail wrap that's coming off. And that's good. All right. Now this one is looking pretty nice. So that, ladies, is how you put on a Jamberry nail wrap. If you have any more questions or need some help or would like to order some Jamberry nail wraps, please feel free to contact me at the information on my business card here. And I hope you ladies have a lovely day. Take care. Bye-bye.